America. Normally when I'm joined by United States Senator Tom Cotton, we josh a little bit about college football or whatever is going on, but it's such a grim day with Belgium still on lockdown and terror suspects everywhere, as well as additional murder in Israel and the loss of Ezra Schwartz there last weekend. I'll go right to the hard stuff. Senator Cotton, welcome. I hope you'll have a blessed Thanksgiving with your wife and newborn, but the world's on fire. Hey, Hugh, thanks for having me on again. You're right. These are grim days. I just returned from a three-day trip to the Middle East, uh, and the view doesn't look any better over there. Our allies are deeply worried. Um, neither our Iran nuclear deal nor our half-hearted counter-ISIS strategy has done anything to reassure them, uh, and they're just as worried as we are in the West about continued attacks from the Islamic State and the continued rise of the Islamic Republic. Now, now Senator Cotton, where did you go? Who did you talk to? What did they tell you? We were in uh, Qatar briefly, where we visited with some of our troops there at Al Udid Air Force Base, and when we went on to Saudi Arabia and to the United Arab Emirates. And one common theme I heard, Hugh, is a concern that America is continuing to retreat from the region. One thing that will appeal to you, Hugh, is that uh, the deep concern about the absence of an American carrier in the Persian Gulf for just a few months. Hmm. In the United States, that may not seem like much, but in the region, it is a concrete example of America's absence from the region. Another concern I heard is the very real concern that I share. The West is beginning to reach some kind of rapprochement with Iran, Bashar al-Assad in Syria, and Russia. Uh, And I think that would be a grave mistake because it's the murders of so many Sunnis, and of course in Syria and now in Iraq, by that Iranian-supported Shiite access that gave a lot of the fuel to the fire that caused ISIS to rise. And to expect Iran and Hezbollah and Assad and Russia to defeat the Islamic State is like expecting gasoline to put out a fire. Well, this is splitting the Republican primary electorate. Some are suggesting that, hey, let's hold the line in Ukraine and the Baltics and be tough with Putin in Europe, but welcome him on board in the anti-ISIS fight. What's your response to that, Senator Cotton? That would be deeply unwise, Hugh, and it would also be counterproductive. As I said, it would simply inflame further Sunni opinion in Iraq and Syria and drive them further into the arms of the Islamic State. Remember, Vladimir Putin and Russia are an enemy of the United States. They have been thwarting U.S. interests around the world for years now. Furthermore, we don't need Vladimir Putin to defeat the Islamic State. This is not like World War II when we needed Russia to help defeat Nazi Germany. We can do this by ourselves with our allies, Western Europe, and in the Sunni Arab states. Yeah, no, finally, Senator, go ahead. I was going to say, fi- finally, his, Vladimir Putin's words about fighting ISIS are belied by his actions. The vast majority of his airstrikes have been directed against Assad, against the opposition to Assad in Western and Northern Syria, not against Islamic State strongholds. Now, yesterday I was on with Jake Tapper on State of the Union. I said this has become the five-word presidency, leading from behind, JVs, and contained. And that sums it all up. It just tells you everything you need to know. What are we going to do for 15 months? You know, the president is the president. Pray for his safety and all that stuff. But he just seems clueless. Well, Hugh, I'd apply a very simple test. We should ask ourselves, and this applies to all of us, to you, to me, to President Obama, to any man on the street, to any member of Congress. What would you do if the United States suffered a parasol attack? We should do that right now. Whatever it is, whatever you think we would do if we suffered a parasol attack in Little Rock or in Los Angeles, we should do that right now before we get attacked. And to me, that certainly would include more aggressive actions against the Islamic State from the air, more troops to help the fighting forces from places like Iraq and our other Sunni Arab allies in the region, and taking the gloves off uh, our fight against the Islamic State from a leadership perspective. This is exactly what Michael Morrell wrote about his book, in his book, The Great War of Our Time. You have to deny terrorist group safe statements. You have to go after their leadership. We have clearly been conducting a half-hearted campaign against the Islamic State. We can't keep that up. Now, in terms of the uh, House bill on the Syrian refugees, which has been sent to the Senate, and some of your colleagues on the Democratic side have offered an alternative having to do with American visas. I'm not sure I'm against that, but is that just an attempt by them not to deal with what is going on, or is that a serious attempt to plug a second hole in the dike? Well, Hugh, the visa waiver program does create some real problems. I mean, there are numerous countries around the world where you don't need an America, or don't need a visa to travel to America. And many of those countries have confirmed citizens who are 
who are currently in Syria or who have been to Syria. So I don't think it's an either-or proposition. Um, I'm not sure that the Senate will take up the House bill because of the limited amount of time we have left, but I suspect on the year-end spending bill, there might be some measures to either ensure that the Obama administration's vetting procedures are sufficient or to at least impose a temporary pause on the refugee program from Syria until the American people can be confident in that vetting process. But that doesn't preclude action on the visa waiver program. Do do you anticipate that such a measure on a spending bill would have sufficient uh, authority to override a presidential veto? Well, you almost a quarter of House Democrats voted in favor of it, and public opinion polls show that two-thirds of Americans support it. So I would suspect that numerous uh, Democrats in the Senate would vote in favor of it as well. What do you? What is your critique of the current situation vis-a-vis Syrian refugees? Well, so, Hugh, the vast majority of Syrian refugees uh, are suffering from the Islamic State, um, and they're trying to get away from the depredations of that terrorist group. The problem is it's, it's not that we're opposed to the refugee program in general, but we're not sure that the vetting process can work. I mean, the director of the FBI has said it's only as good as the databases you have, and the databases against which we check in Syria are virtually non-existent. So if someone hasn't done anything to get into that database, and you can be assured that the Islamic State is specifically trying to identify clean recruits, then how will we know if they've infiltrated someone in the United States or into the West, or into to Western Europe? So it's not that we we don't want to have America be a place for refugees to come, but we have to be assured, first and foremost, that the safety and the security of the American people will not be threatened by people to whom we grant refugee status. And then finally, Senator Cotton, uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to get back in the skiff or be brief since your return from your travels, but are you uh, alarmed about any specific information you've seen or raw intelligence concerning New York, Washington, Atlanta, any of these reports that we've seen? You actually, I would say the, the bigger concern I have is that there seems to have been a gap in intelligence leading into the terrorist attacks. That suggests to me that some of the reforms we've adopted or some of the proposals that Europe has never taken up have actually hurt our intelligence collection. It also suggests that the Islamic State is very intentionally using end-to-end encryption programs specifically designed to avoid detection by Western intelligence services. So so that's really what's troubling to me is that, by all accounts, there was very little warning of a uh, specific incredible threat against terrorists. Uh, And if that's the case, then we have to worry about attacks here in the United States uh, regularly. And the only way to stop those attacks is not by getting into a defensive crouch here, but by going more effectively under the offense against the Islamic State over there. And you've introduced a bill, I believe, to repeal some of the prohibitions on metadata collection. Am I correct about that, Senator Cotton? It, it wouldn't repeal it. It would simply postpone it. Uh, it goes into effect on December 1. Uh, my bill would simply say that we should hit the pause button and wait till the president can certify that the new uh, metadata program will be as effective as the current one. I think that's the least we should do, given the height threat environment we now face. Senator Tom Cotton, thank you for joining me on your return. Have a blessed Thanksgiving and hopefully a peaceful one. And I will be talking to you next week. Don't go anywhere, America. It's the Hugh Hewitt Show. 